I will like to investigate factorial equations more in my future video though. And in fact, if you want to see how to solve x factorial is equal to a much bigger number, let's say 100, you guys can check out this video done by Misty Math Music. He participated in my Summer Rising Star Math YouTuber Challenge. So go ahead and check that out. He used the Lambert W function as well. We can say that if we wanted to solve x factorial equals 100, we just plug this 100 into this y over here and this y over here, and we should get a close enough answer to x. So this right here, it's actually a very good approximation. If you want to solve the equation, x factorial is equal to y, and we just have to make sure that y is big enough. In his video, he used 100 for y, and the answer that he got was very, very good. Now the question is that, if we want to solve a factorial equation, yes, we can use this if y is big enough, and we can get a positive answer for that. But how can we actually end up with the negative solutions? Because remember, x factorial is actually just this integral. Suppose we want to make this equal to 3. There are negative x values that can actually make this true. But I have no idea how to do that. So if you guys have any idea how we can find out the negative solution to this kind of equations, let me know.